when we become a, a parent, sometimes um, we do not consciously um, think on ways as to what would be the most appropriate parenting method. Sometimes you just go with the flow. Okay, I already have one child, two children, three children, and without, uh, you know, really giving uh, time and effort to understand, to learn what parenting is all about. And um, and so today, that's why I I, I opened my my um, my talk with thinking the parents who are who have spared their time uh, today to listen to this because um, being a parent of a five year old son, this is one of the many topics that are very that is very close to my heart. Talking about parenting, I consider myself as a family. Uh, and life and mental health advocate. And I, I really, really do hope that I could share to you that aim and that vision um, to be an advocate of family and life. So let's talk about parenting and why it matters. Siguro to answer the question why it matters, the very first, uh, I mean, to, to, to generalize the answers that we can give to that question as to why it matters is that other things may change us, but we start and end with family. That's according to Anthony. And we, being parents, we, we, we play a very crucial role in that family and in the, in the world that we create with the families that we have. So let us go back and get reminded of what are the roles of parents. So let's talk about the dual role of parents. So there are two broad categories into which the role of the parents can be divided. So we have the nurture role and the structure role. So I believe you're familiar with the nurture role. So in the nurture role, you take good care of your children's basic needs, such as food, medical care, shelter, clothing, even education. That's why you put your, you enrolled your students in Bohol Wisdom School, right? Because that's part of our nurture role, as well as to give them love, attention, understanding, acceptance, time, and support. So in, in playing this role, what do we expect to get as a, what we can sow or what we can reap from, from playing the nurture role? Um, uh, before that, nurture role further is, would allow a parent to listen to their children. They are patient and they give time to have fun with them. You make time for your kids, show an interest in them and their activities and encourage them to pursue their passions. Um, it is through words and actions because even if, um, because sometimes we, we tend to, parents tend to believe that children already understand what they, what we want them, what we want for them. We, we may think na, Kibaw na ka anak day kay kanang gimikanan ba yako no kibaw jud ka nga gusto ko ingani ingani but sometimes it is through your words and actions that you communicate to your children that they are loved and accepted. Um, our attitude, even if we have a positive attitude towards our children, positive evaluation towards our children, towards our family, that cannot be fully understood not unless it will be spoken into words and it will be shown into actions. Our attitude, our evaluations, they're just inside our mind. If they are not communicated through words and actions, it can never be fully um, understood by the receiver or by the person and that is your children, okay? And, and so when we continue doing our nurture role, when you are nurturing, your children feel good about themselves, feel lovable and worthy of being cared for. They feel listened to, like their, they, their ideas, feelings, their needs. They feel that they are understood. They become trusting because remember, uh, I, 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 I asked, by the way, Ma'am Christine, no, as to what are the 
uh, who would be my audience for today. And I'm very happy to learn that they are actually the basic education, uh, the parents of the basic education pupils. And I'm very happy because I always believe that at this, at this age of our children, this is the planting season of good values and principles in life that they can carry with them um, in the future, you know? And I always tell parents that in, in the eyes of our children, um, we as the parents or the caregivers, they mirror, they look at the world through our eyes. They look at the word, uh, they look at the world through our actions and our words. That means that for us, um, for them to trust that the world is caring, that the world is trusting, that the world is loving, and that the world is worthy to be um, to, 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 to live your life, but you no, know, is they they start uh, it starts from what they feel and what they can experience from their parents. That means that we parents are the mirror of the world that if they can trust the parents then that will also cultivate and develop the sense of trust to in uh, to our children and to the world that they live in when you are nurturing they learn that they can tackle difficult situations and face challenges because you will be there you will be there um, they are able to give back to other people through the emotional support they are given from you the attachment or the bond that we create with our children will become a scaffold to how they would also create and build relationships in the future. That is why a while ago, it ends, it starts and ends with a family. That's a nurturing role. That's what we, that's what children, that's the impact of this role to our children. And whose parents do not want their children to feel good, to be lovable and worthy, to become trusting so that they can also trust others and they can be able to give back in their relationships with others. I believe there's no parent who doesn't want that, right? No, in our, in, for our children. So there's also a balance for that, the nurture balance. If you play the nurture role too much, you become overly protective intrusive uh, children don't learn life skills because they're always ready to carry them to always ready to to fulfill their their roles as well as children um, they, the children will remain egocentric um, that's when we if for the Lehman's term that's when they become spoiled right um, they are not anymore willing to try because they believe that you have you parents are there to do it for them. And if it is too little, you become, the children would become emotionally distant when the nurturing, the playing of the role of the nurture role is too little. The children will become emotionally distant, not involved enough. Children don't feel loved and children don't develop trust. Because in the nurture, nurturing role, one thing that is the most, the primary thing that is a target is to build the emotional stability of these children. And so when it is too little, you can become, uh, it, the children can become emotionally distant, okay? So let's talk further more as to how to balance that role uh, uh, later on, because we move on to the next role that a parent could play. That sometimes this, Second role, structure role, overpowers so much the nurture role. Now, there is uh, no balance anymore of the role. So what is then the structure role? The other part of the job, of your job as a parent, is to provide structure for your children. And when we say structure, you give direction, you impose rules, you use discipline, set limits, establish and follow through with consequences, hold your children accountable for their behavior and teach values, okay? So as you nurture them, you also encourage them to, 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 be, to become a disciplined individual by setting them limits, 
uh, establish consequences and be firm with it. So structure role means providing the guidance that helps your children to change, grow, and mature. Responsible behavior in line with your children's maturity levels is taught and expected. But sometimes um, we tend to forget that we can always, uh, in order to, to, to discipline our children, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to become rude, to become someone very overpowering to them, no? Um, parents tend to, some parents, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about some parents who tend to forget that to discipline does not necessarily mean to harm the individual. To discipline does not necessarily mean to, to crash the, the self-image, uh, the self-confidence of an individual. Does, that does not necessarily mean that does not necessary to happen for you to be able to play the role effectively, the structural role effectively. And in providing structure, your children feel a sense of safety that rules will be in place when they cannot control their own impulses. Can you just imagine uh, a parent who already knows that the person uh, that their children are not doing the best or not doing the right, no, or the most appropriate behavior, and still did not do anything about it, diba? So that could also become dangerous for the children or for the child uh, along the way, no? If you will never stop them, guide them, and be in charge of their well-being. Um, children will learn to tolerate a reasonable amount of frustration and disappointment when they do not always get their own way because sometimes delaying gratification, meaning let, letting them wait for the right time, Letting uh, delay gratification is uh, satisfying their needs in a little while instead of the time that they are demanding you to give it to them. No, so in that way, when you become firm, um, they they can learn to tolerate a reasonable amount of frustration and disappointment. Discover that the world does not revolve totally around them. As a result, they become less egocentric. They learn responsible behavior that they are capable of doing things. They learn from their mistakes. Because again, that's one thing that, uh, that is the primary thing, uh, one of the important things that can be achieved by playing the role, uh, the structure role, to let them learn from their mistakes as you discipline, to limit, the, uh, to give them uh, boundaries and limitations. They gain experience making decisions become more self-sufficient and capable as they learn the skills to become independent, internalize your rules and values. And uh, you, might, you might say, no, that, mom, are we talking about a grade one first, a grade one pupil and letting them learn all these things? Yes, yes. Remember that we cannot underestimate the capacity and capacity capability of these young children to absorb whatever the things that you are teaching them. They may not be able to, to rephrase it to you. They may not be able to paraphrase it to you and really tell you what they, they, they really understood with the things that you are teaching them. But believe me, one day in their actions and in their words, um, it will manifest. It will manifest. So there is no, uh, no uh, early time to plant good values to our children. And so th there's the structure balance. Too much of structure role, of playing the structure role would lead to an overly controlling uh, child, a rigid child, kanabang, Dilit na lang makalihok, no? Because feeling niya anytime uh, i-discipline siya, if, every time masayup siya. Uh, children rebel or become passive because they do not want anymore to do something because they are afraid to, be, to, to, to uh, make mistakes and to be disciplined 
in an inappropriate way by 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 parents and so they become passive they become they tend to close their doors to experiences and just focus on their own world and then that's when they become aloof so on and so forth no children don't think for themselves um they children would be would feel uh, afraid to to share would be afraid to um to talk no about their feelings about their experience because of too much structural from the parent while too little expectations are unclear when there is too little meaning there is inconsistency that also follows inconsistency of your setting of bounds and limitations um so the expectations are unclear ingon si mama na kung ingani ko um i would do this pero ano bang wala man lagi ko niya gistoryaan about it last time man lagi when i did the same thing ingon siya na ingan ni on and how come this time around wala wala pay nadawat niya no so expectations are unclear rules are inconsistent children do not feel safe children do not become responsible especially if again we're we're talking about inconsistency of playing the structured role kung pwede pa lang na atay kanang barometer kana bang pareha sa ato ang ma check ato ang kanang atong temperature no nga kung over na sa temperature nga gi-allow pasudlon ta sa supermarket mo mutingog na siya how we wish that we have that kind of device and to check oops na over na ka mama oops na over na ka papa oops little na kaayo pa pa no how we wish we could have that and so the question is to ingana di kalisod ang parenting yes it is it is nobody says that to parent a life because we are not just parenting a physical body remember we are parenting a life a person who would become a future of a nation a future of the society a future of the community where he or she is present and so to answer that is it really difficult yes it is it is difficult to find a balance between how and when to nurture our children and how and when to provide structure however it does not tell us that there is nothing that we can do with that difficulty no one is telling you that there's nothing that you can do to achieve healthy parenting that is why being you being present here today is one way to balance out because you want to become uh, uh to to achieve healthy parenting i believe that's why you're here with me today because again nothing is easy even in life life uh, when you decide to believe and accept that life is not easy is also the time that you nurture and develop those life skills so that when life challenges you then you have with you those skills because if you believe continue believing that oy kapuya sa daning life oy dili dapat magudon ka ni siya nga kanang sayon lang dapat happy happy lang if that is your attitude towards life that would give you a higher chance to feel frustrated to become depressed because if things are not going going the right way as you expect it to be then you tend to 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 lose hope then it's easier for you to lose hope and to to lose your grip with the life that you want to achieve and so does in parenting as i told you a while ago when you would like to learn how to play piano to play guitar to play the sports that you want it takes conscious effort right it takes conscious effort of understanding what are the rules what are the policy or the rules of this of the sports what are the things that i need do i need a a, a wilson banang a racket kay pinakamaayo na siya nga racket so you you diba you you we we learn the game so does in parenting giving time to learn the game of parenting giving time and effort to learn parenting would be the best thing that we can do uh for our child no to find time
to learn how to achieve healthy parenting. Okay? So now, so it's between the two roles, okay? So having the nurture role and structure role. Now, let me give you this um, scenario because sometimes, um, ah, sige, later na lang, sige. Let me read to you the scenario. Let's say your children just threw a ball in the house and broke a picture frame. Your first instinct may be to discipline him because he did a mistake or he, he did something that causes, you know, uh, a broken frame. And let's say that frame causes you so much, no, with the money because it is an antique frame. You got it from Paris or from uh, your outside, nga, kana, out of the country, nga, what do you call that? Uh, vacation, no? And so your first instinct, oh my God, a frame, picture frame. And so your first instinct may be to discipline him. However, if he is physically hurt or scared, you may decide that you need to be nurturing first and calm your child down before you discuss the need to clean up the broken glass and why you have a rule against playing ball in the house to begin with. Sometimes rules must be, again, communicated in words because um, when you say, Kibaw na gud ka ana day dapat baya jud day nga ni kaday oy undoy dapat kibaw na unta ka ana kay kuan gud kibaw gud ka nga si mama blah 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 no without even asking doy kibaw ba to ka nga kung ingani like this and like this so instead of expecting it from them then communicating the rules would really make a difference okay so again we may be, we may have this instinct to be, uh, to, to play the structure role, but if the scenario uh, gives you the opportunity to play the nurturing role, then you must begin with that. Begin with making sure and securing and calming your child and feel, uh, making them feel safe if, even with the kind of mistake uh, of breaking uh, or breaking rather the picture frame and then that's the time when you can lay down the rules the house rules no but sometimes i have i have uh, i have someone who shared to me na luoy daw siya sa yung pag ko no because yang mama or yang i am not sure which parent no because of course it was a, mis a mistake nga ni koan ang bata um, yes, using the car of the parents. When the child arrived in the house, the very first statement that was given by the parent was that, Nano mang imo mangikuha? What if nabanga ka magkadamage ang sakyanan? Wa para banat nato na human ubayan. And hearing that, before asking, before telling the person, before telling the child na, doy, nasuko ko, nga nung nasuko ko, kay, what if, na-discuss siya ka, o simba ko, simba ko, na yung daotang nahitabo sa imuha, it could have been, na, wala na ka, dili, nakakabalik diri. But, again, the very first statement of the parent is, kung na-damage ang sakyanan, unsaon naman lang, na, wala para ba pa na human o bayan. You know, so that's a very, that's a common thing uh, that we have uh, for parents that sometimes we tend to forget that, hey, uh, we, uh, the rules of a parent is, of course, discipline, but we also have to make sure that they feel loved as you discipline them. All right. Now. Let's go to, let's just have a run through of the different parenting styles. And let's get to, uh, again, this at this part, it may not be that your first time to hear it, but uh, we may learn, relearn all these things and try to calibrate and try to, you know, to be, to be aware of our parenting styles 
And it because it doesn't follow that when you have this parenting style, you can be that for the rest of the time that you are a parent. Uh, if you think that something is not, you know, not helping out our children, then we can always we can always be flexible with our parenting styles. Uh, with our parenting styles, you may have these four at some points. At some moments, we sometimes we become permissive, but there will always be one type of parenting style that is dominant, meaning in most cases, mao ang mugawas, no? And in talking about parenting styles, there is two factors that we're talking about. It has something to do with responsiveness, your degree, the degree of responsiveness of the parent, and the degree of uh, demandingness. Okay, for the authoritarian. Parents, uh, parenting style, parents demands blind obedience. They are punitive, emotionally cold, and high expectations. If you notice, na, on the left side, na ashay high na demand, demandingness. Pero, there's low responsiveness. Diba? Um, sige, let's, let's just go to the how we define demandingness na lang sa unresponsiveness no? before we, we talk about those different styles. So when you say demandingness, it refers to the extent parent, to the extent that parents control their child's behavior or demand their maturity, no? their demand. Or when we, when we, if we need to use a concrete examples, demand is, could also be, okay, I need you to graduate. Suma kum laude. I need you to I need you to be always perfect in your score. I need you to be always um, to be always uh, prim and proper. You have to be always this and that. No, I need you to be this and that. While responsiveness refers to the degree, to the degree that parents are accepting and sensitive to their child's emotional and development need, developmental needs and the degree of responding to their needs, okay? Now let's go back to these different parenting styles. We do have authoritarian parenting styles. In this, parents demands blind obedience. Let's say, okay, um, do you like this? And the uh, and the, the child would say no, but in Shah, no, you have to like this because you know what? This is the best, uh, uh, this is the most kind of pinakasikat nga, 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 uh, toy in the market. So what? You don't like it. Have this, and you'll be uh, for sure. You're gonna love this. And uh, no, 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 no bots. Just follow me, okay? So that's demands. It demands blind obedience. So the the child obey not because he believes the principles that is being taught up from that scenario, but because he believes it because. Um, out of being afraid of the parent, from the uh, being afraid of the parent and uh, being punished by the parent, no, and not necessarily believes on the cause or on the on the on the underlying value that you want them to 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 learn. They are punitive. They are emotionally cold. They have high expectations, but remember, they have low responsiveness. So they demand so much of the child, but when the child needs their guidance, needs their help and support, they provide low response to that, okay? While we have uh, authoritative, uh, authoritative, um, typo error, I guess. Um, they, these are parents who have clear, consistent boundaries. They have open communication. They are nurturing and affectionate, high expectations. These are the types of parents that when children would share to them, they do not cut them off. They listen, okay? They listen not only from the ears, but they also listen from their hearts. So if you look at the, the matrix, there's a high demandingness, so they can demand, they, high, they demand, uh, so much from these children, but when the children needs them, they also respond. So there is high demandingness, but they also respond in a high extent. No, that's why they um, they are nurturing, affectionate. Then we have uninvolved parenting style. They have low demandingness. They have also low responsiveness because sometimes to become demanding is not all the time negative. 
because we also need to because that's part of structure structure role remember to set them limits to to guide them uh in setting up their own goals because can you imagine if wala pa paki alam ang ang mama no like they do not demand nga oy dai i need you to finish your 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 class uh, your your degree okay that is the only thing i need from you ana but no so there's also good about demanding uh uh on the right degree from our uh from our children all right but in this case for for a parenting style that is fun involved they have low demandingness they do not communicate their what they want their goals to their children so that their children can also be guided as to what they would like to do and then because they are low demandingness kay wala man kay gipangayo sa imuha then okay lang wa po ko i-respond sa imuha no so they also have low responsiveness because they do not give so much they do not give to their children and so they are not asking asking from them as well while we go to permissive no permissive have low demandingness but high responsiveness so they have low expectations they are very lenient they have few boundaries acts like a child's best friend avoids confrontation so even if there is high responsiveness but if there's low demandingness that is permissive it may not also be something advantageous at all times for the children because if you only play the role as best friend but truck but tend to forget your structural role that i need to do this for um, i need to set boundaries to set limits they need to to more or less follow uh what i i i i share to them that is good for them if wala ingana they avoid confrontations they avoid communicating with them but they're always there it it's not also a balance of the roles okay so so i need you to calibrate your own experiences as a parent as to the level of demandingness and the level of your responsiveness and why are we talking about this even if we already know this uh let's get to be reminded as to what are the impact your parenting style again to the question why it matters parenting and why it matters your parenting style impacts your child's development and well-being so impact to child development for a purse for a child for a child with a authoritative na parent no so parenting style is warm responsive there is clear ru rules high expectations supportive associated outcome based on research okay so it is scientifically uh, proven uh, based on researches that it may lead higher chances for higher academic performance uh, positive self esteem there is better social skills less mental illness and it lowers delinquency okay so the uh, children with this parenting style the parent through this style have lower delinquency being uh, a juvenile delinquent in the society being a problem to the society there's a lower chance for that next is for an authoritarian uh, uh parenting style unresponsive strict rules high expectation expect blind obedience but low responsiveness associated outcome is lowers academic at uh, lower academic performance there is less self esteem no self esteem is their self worth and their judgment about themselves no uh, if they are lovable if they are worthy no there's less of that poor social skills um chances for mental illnesses drug alcohol abuse and delinquency of course of course um disclaimer it does not happen all the time but higher chances for all of these to come out from your child from the children no permissive so if the parenting style is wa warm and responsive few or no rules indulgent lenient kapud kaayo walay demandingness uh low and demanding this uh, associated outcome would be impulsive behavior egocentric because if you remember so permissive low demandingness their high responsiveness they, they are being taken care of to the point that they become egocentric no there is impulsive behavior uh problematic relationship and we don't want that right for our children impact to child development neglectful or 
kadtong unattentive no or because other sources may name them differently man good no but they refer to the same thing so um that one is what you call the for a while huh uninvolved sorry <laughs> sige uninvolved or the neglectful no cold or unresponsive no rules uninvolved low sa demandingness no low pa din responsiveness associated out outcome is impulsive behavior delinquency drug or alcohol abuse suicides uh, because just imagining that kind of parent who is uninvolved who doesn't support the children their children diba i mean we can already um see the potential scenario of the future of the child will be correct diba um kita mangaling adagko na ta we even some uh, we may sometimes refer to our parents gihapon how much more these li little children diba and again because this time of their life is the planting season that means that when they grow up they will carry with them and that's the time where in when they are become adult that's the time where in that's a test of your parenting style let's see who these children will be in the future in one way or another your parenting style have impacted to the kind of person that they are or they will be okay so again impact to child development Permissive parenting often results in children who rank low in happiness and self-regulation. That's according to a study. These children are more likely to experience problems with authority and tend to perform poorly in school. Uninvolved parenting styles rank lowest across all life domains. So um, life domains, no, they, uh, they lack self-control, they have low self-esteem and are less competent than their peers. So can you, um, and it's not difficult to imagine why these children would lead to, be, to, to become these when there are uninvolved parents, right? Our, uh, and then sometimes, uh, we need to remember child, uh, parents no, that the because sometimes um, during the uh, other parents, okay, other parents put so much uh, accountability and responsibility to the children, I mean to the school and to the to the teachers that if something is wrong with their child, it is easier for them to ask, Mom, don't someone see. Mark, ma'am, ma'am, naun sa man si Trisha, ma'am, nga nung naingani naman ni siya, ma'am, yun sa man din ninyo. With that, we tend to forget sometimes that a teacher-parent responsibility to a child is a collaborative, a collaborative responsibility that remember, before they went to school, we have nourished them right firsthand in our home. Correct? Diba? So, because other parents would say, now, on some means, blah, 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 blah. So, well, that could be okay if there's really an apparent problem with the system, with the school. But sometimes it may also, we may need also to, to find time to look at ourselves as parents, this environment in our family, the climate of our family. Because once again, teacher, parents, accountability to these children should be collaborative. No? And then why are we talking about all these things? Why do we need to, to consciously find time and effort to, to become, I mean, to, to learn what would be the appropriate uh, parenting methods? Because our job as parents is not to protect our children from every hurt in life, but rather to prepare our children to accept the inevitable hurts and nobly rise above them no it's not it's not uh, our 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 job is to not to protect them forever not to embrace them and that to the point that they are not learning any more life skills because they need life skills so that one day when we are not around anymore and life will continue to become difficult and hard they will nobly rise above them with the skills that we have implanted to them or with them. 
Now, let me share to you some practical things going on and some practical things that we can, uh, you know, we can practice you know, at home after understanding the impact. You know? So it does, uh, because if we continue talking about parenting, we may, uh, 24 hours may not be enough. <laughs> no? So if we, need, if we will pinpoint one by one really specific things. So I, I, uh, I decided to focus on communication because sometimes I have, uh, um, I, I know someone, no, uh, he is experiencing, or she is experiencing depression. And when I asked her if the parents know about it, and if the parents are um, someone responsive, even mag siya nga, yes ma'am, actually, okay ba yung sila? Probably the reason why they would not communicate because they don't also know how to communicate. No? Sometimes, some parents confuse verbal contact with communication. That when your lips are opening and opening, you you believe that, or we believe parents, because I am a parent as well, so we believe that that's already communication. When your children, their if their lips are opening and opening, you believe that they are also communicating to you, and that is not necessarily communication. Communication is giving and receiving. That whatever I want to convey is being received by the other individual. No, one of the studies, the Institute of Family Relations reports in a survey that ten negative com comment for every. 10 negative comments given to a child um, is only one positive. So the ratio of negative and positive, imagine, is 10 to 1. Every 10 negative comments, there's only one positive comment. That's according to a study. So that's 90% negative. No? Uh, for every 10, rather, for every 10, usara ana sa 10. Ang positive, the rest are negative. So that's 90% negative. And can you just imagine for a child to, to receive that huge percentage? No? Because sometimes uh, parents believe that um, uh, parents believe that when you for us to to for us to mold our children to be a, a good individual or with a good character, it means that they, we tell them what to do. That we believe that in, in talking with them and talking is, is just all about preaching, criticizing them. We believe that that's already communication. No? However, that is not the thing. Okay? Um, and so in that case, Child, the child will just then magkulong sa yung own world because he or she is not being heard. No, she feels. Most of us assume that in order to develop our child's character, we must tell him what we do not like about him. About him. Again, most of us assume that in order to develop our child's character, we must tell him what we do not like about him which should not be the case we load our speech with preaching admonishing commanding all of which convey on acceptance and remember to begin the process of communication there must be the attitude of acceptance accepting that any child that mistakes are inevitable that a child given a six-year-old child, a six-year-old child, an eight-year-old child, biologically and physiologically are not yet matured. Their frontal lobe, who is responsible for the higher order thinking, are, are yet to develop until, adult, until adolescence. And so when you tell them logic and ration, uh, uh, rational thinking, physiologically and biologically, they are not yet capable of that. And to expect a child, a six-year-old child, eight-year-old child to be mature is very unfair. And to accept that is the beginning of the communication. That we must not, and to, to build their character does not only mean 
that we tell them what we do not like about him. When children share their emotions with us, we proceed to tell them how they should or should not feel, as though our statements of logic can erase their feelings, right? Um, uh, uh, let's say, for example, you have also adolescent na uh, child, no? Uh, or, uh, uh, yes. And, uh, ma, you know what, ma? I feel so alone. I feel so depressed about what's going on. And then we would cut them off by saying, Ha? Nga nugot ang inga na imong gibati day. Na akay nindot nga balay. Na akay nindot nga. nga I, I give you everything you need. Uh, you are um, living a beautiful life. You are in a school that is a prestigious school. Why do you feel like that? You should not feel that way. And then the child is shut down. And then if you will tell them, okay, continue talking. And then they will shut down. They will stop talking anymore. Because instead of recognizing what they feel, you shut them down and tell them logic in a situation that logic may not be the one that will erase their feelings. Right? Diba? But instead, ma, nga niya kong feeling, kung kayo ko, ubus kayo ko, down kayo ko, depressed kayo ko. Instead, your statement can be, why do you feel that? What makes you feel that way? Uh huh. Do you think there is a way to stop the feeling? Do you think there is a way that you can help yourself? Do you think there's a way we can help you with that feeling? In that case, you communicate with the person or with your child. Okay. Now, another practical. Uh, tip would be the I statement instead of you statement. So let's have this scenario. And uh, the scenario is that the father is dozing or sleeping on the sofa after supper, but is awakened by quarreling between two brothers. And the common statement, Kabanha ba ninyo? Oy! Uh, kasama ba ninyo? You are so selfish. Kita mo manalang natug ko. Kamu jud mga wa jud mo mga batasan. That's the you statement. You are so, you are like this, you are like that. And you know what? You statements are somewhat like the inter children would interpret you statements as judgment to their worth. Whereas, I statements merely refer to the parents' feelings. So we go to the I statement that instead of saying, you are so selfish, you are mga why batasan, you are like that and like this, no? let's try to shift to I statement. Instead, you can say, I can sleep with so much noise going on. You know what, guys? I've had a hard day at work and I want to relax without listening to all this bickering and the quarreling that you are having. Can you please help me to get to sleep? Something like that. No? So what is the difference with the you and I? You is like giving judgment. Uh, they, you are commanding what you are telling them something about themselves as children that it may, it may um, convey um, you judging their work. No? Uh, and in that case, it will resist them or it will reduce uh, or it will lead to resistance and rebellion. No? But if you notice in the I statement, it is just merely stating your feeling as a parent with what we, they are doing. Notice that they do not contain commands, right? And they do not put down their children. Uh, the parents does not directly telling the children what they should do. So in this case, they they allow their children to learn how they uh, to learn how their parents feel in the scenario that they are do uh, they that they are kanang gimmick out from with them and with a parent. I statements according to study are much more likely to produce positive behavior changes, no? instead of you. Another is mother sewing. And then the young child has discovered the plug and keeps pulling it out of the socket. So instead of, kasamok ba ni mo? Oy, ikaw, Judno, 
kuan jud ka ayo ka ikaw jung bata ka bla 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 ay nako kagahi ba jug ulo aning bata and then we shift to i statement you know what i don't have much time to sew today it really slows me down when you, i have to keep replacing the plug i don't have time to play now so can i continue and that would be the i statement once again according to study i statement are much more likely to produce positive behavior changes and to reduce feelings of rebellion and resistance that often accompany with you statements. And in that case, they will learn what to do with that scenario instead of us telling them, commanding them what they need to do or else that will lead to blind obedience. And they will, and chances are, they will continue doing it because they have not received the communication that parents also have feelings that they need to consider and so and that is uh, it's sometimes you know we know what is right we know what is appropriate but there's a question on how to communicate it so um that we may have so much to learn in in communicating because sometimes again it's not what you say but it's how you say it, right? Now, why all these things? Why we need to communicate, we need to look into our parenting style because these are the pillars. When you say, let me talk about the pillars. These pillars are the things that we can reap. Uh, you will reap what you sow by, you know, consciously giving effort to, to, your, to your children uh, in parenting them. One thing that they can do, they can get as they grow older, no, um, is the awareness of self, no, awareness of their belief system, awareness of who they are, so that if the society, the social media, the peer pressure is challenging their themselves or their self, their concept of self, well, they are aware, then it's not easier for them to bend and to be at the mercy of other people just to be accepted. This pillar involves a child's objective awareness of their strengths and recognitions of their abilities. A good parent will encourage a child on how to use these to their advantage in a way that benefits society as well. Creative problem solving later in real life involves wearing as many hats as possible. Also, falling under the category of self-awareness is the ability to name feelings inside so that they can also communicate that, that to the outside environment. And in that way, it will lead to a smooth and harmonious relationship to the family and with others when they are able to name their feelings and to communicate that so that they can be a benefit and an asset to the society. The awareness of others' needs, that's a pillar too that you would like to build in our children. Regardless of status and standing, there is always room to become more aware of other people's needs. And kids do not just listen to what you say, they also closely monitor what you do and look up to your example. So remember that, that kids do not just listen on what you say, but they also closely monitor and do and look up to your example. So being aware of others' needs is being not, um, not self-centered anymore because it's letting them aware that as social beings, we can never be alone. We cannot, be, we cannot achieve highest potential, <clears throat> excuse me, self-actualization without the assistance, um, nourishment, and encouragement and support of others and therefore we must children should be aware that there are people that they must be aware of the needs of other people to, to achieve harmonious um, relationship pillar three that we build to our children is the ability to manage oneself no because stress are inevitable stress is inevitable Hurts and pains in this world are inevitable. Um, there could be people who could be abusive are inevitable. Anxiety can be an, are in, is inevitable. So the ability we need to cultivate within them 
the ability to manage oneself. If it cannot be eliminated, then it is to manage. Self-control includes impulse control, the value of delayed gratification. This pillar is important because adults who can manage themselves are likely to refrain from substance abuse or addictions later in their lives. No? Those parents nga magsigi lag yes, yes, yes without the right timing because there's also a right timing for saying yes and saying no. When you say no when at the right timing, you are delaying their satisfaction, gratification for a better cause, for a better reward then that is self-control. And when they cultivated that as early as their, child, as their childhood, then it will make the, uh, they will make the most out of it and benefit from it by being able to control their impulses. Pillar four, making responsible decisions. Diba? Uh, when they grow up, they, we, we cannot be always there with them. And so what we can only wish and pray is that by the time that they are not anymore in our nest is for them to continue believing on the values that we have implanted on them so that they can make responsible decisions. And when say responsible decisions, these are decisions not only for him, but as well as for others that is good for the others and good for the environment or for the community that he or she is part of. The, the ability to make responsible decisions comes from the awareness of consequences and an exercise of good judgment. This is where most family traditions and spiritual beliefs play a critical role. Adults. And lastly, the pillar five, is when they make re responsible decisions, they can build harmonious relationships. The journey to a person's harmonious relationship begins at home. So it starts and ends in the family. Parents' quality time and conversations with their children go a long way in fostering their ability to make and sustain relationships with other people when they grow up. I guess that's very clear, no? Unless the family you create is the world you make. That's according to the APR. Si the APR the I is si Daisy Ann Pahangra Sanabe. <laughs> si yours truly. <laughs> Though I'm not sure if somebody have already quoted that, but I have just um, created that a few weeks ago. Uh, being able to experience quality time with my son because uh, my, my partner is a seafarer. So in most of the time in a year, Ako ang naakauban sa ako ang anak, right? So I, I um, to believe that the family you create is the world you make. We, uh, because there are those people who keep on asking, unsa naman yung kalibutan na? What kind of world are we having now? Kani mga tawhana and all, and all. That sometimes you tend to forget, okay, by asking that, have you also asked what kind of family you are having? The kind of family that you are creating the kind of people that you are um, building the character with, that when they go out to your door, are they creating the world that you want for them, right? So the family you create is the world you make. That, that's it. So I have a few more slides. These are the most of the beautiful quotes, my favorite quotes, no? Let's raise children who won't have to recover from their childhood. Being a volunteer of Pagpakabuki, uh, a non-government organization who advocates mental health and mental health awareness, um, doing basic counseling, no, I've been, um, and research shows also that mental illnesses or psychological um, disorders of people, uh, adult people, in one way or another, it's being rooted from their childhood experiences, from their parents, from their families, from their environment. And so let's raise children who won't have to recover from their childhoods, right? Uh, because 
like we say, prevention is better than cure. You don't you don't have to cure someone in a, an adult stage na da kana kain problema. But instead, why why should we not raise children with beautiful with good values, um, so that when they grow up, they don't have to recover from trauma, from from hurtful experiences, painful experiences. As I have shared to you that parenting is also a conscious effort of understanding, learning it. That also the reason why I, I, I enrolled into a degree program, a doctor of philosophy in uh, psychology, major in developmental psychology. So I had a, a, I had a dilemma whether to pursue cl clinical psychology or developmental psychology until the parent in me must need babaw ni overpower because I want in in understanding in learning developmental psychology I would learn the different needs different processes in every stages of life of a child or a person and in that way it will give me also the knowledge as to how to respond to those needs and what I have in mind is nothing but my child uh, eight and chase no so I want to learn. Uh, strategies, techniques, and how to effectively respond to their needs. And so uh, I am, um, I, 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 I enrolled myself in the PhD in psychology, developmental psychology in Marion College. So um, that is really for the, for my son and for the children that I want to have, uh, right? And of course, because life is not easy, and so as parenting a life is not easy, re relying to our own strength may not be enough. We need the guidance of our Almighty Father. And in Proverbs 22, there is the God's training choral, no? that we train up a child in the way he should go, even when he is old. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Because once again, we will never be forever with our children. We can only wish and pray that we have built and planted good values within them so that even if we cannot see them, we cannot be with them, uh, we feel secured that they continue to become a good child of God. When we give them love, when there is instruction, when there is dedication, when there is discipline, and we, when we ask guidance from our almighty God, the Father. Um, again, if we rely on our own strength, we can never do it alone. In this challenging and becoming more complex no, nga, nga world that we have, the world that our children has to face, we need God's guidance. And we need to implant to them as well who God is. Or if we don't teach our children who God is, someone else will teach them everything that he isn't. What a beautiful quote, right? Again, if we don't teach our children who God is, someone else will teach them everything that he isn't. And as much as you want to build or to, uh, to, to have a child who is intellectual, who is academically, uh, and someone performing, we have to make sure that these are also children who do have the love for God. And when we have the love for God, it's not difficult for us to have the love for others. And that's when we can have a child who is an asset to the community. Because not unless if you just bring a life into this world and then abahala na ka kung unsa ka, mudako, bahala na ka, I don't have plans and I don't have ambitions for you. Sige, go lang. That's okay. If you don't, if you do not consciously, uh, wala effort, no, kay wala man sa kay ambition. But whose parents do not ambition that their child would become an asset to the community their child would become someone who is a source of a good inspiration by others from uh by others a source of love a source of strength with the people around him right you want to raise a child who is an asset to the community and so with that i hope and pray um that 
Uh, because again, let me just read this. Society later takes advantage of these benefits when the child grows up to become adults with proper social emotional development. And let me just have one more uh, second to, to acknowledge my family who have cultivated and nurtured me into the kind of woman that I am and to the kind of mother that I am to my son. And uh, that it came early to me that I want to, I want to, to be a mother. I want to be a, a, a married woman because I want also to nurture a child, nurture a life, just how I was being nurtured by my mother and father. But most credit is given to my mother who have made all things possible for us to be who we are today. I pay credit to my mother who, who, who played so much effectively the structure and the nurture role. And with that, I am very happy to say that in one, in one way or another, I've been contributing to the society that I am part of. And so that ends my, uh, my talk with you, my dear parents. I hope that in one way or another, I have given you something that you can put into your pockets and bring with you as you go along with your journey as parents of your children. Once again, this has been Daisy Ann Pahang Rasanabe. Thank you so much for listening and for being with me this morning. And thank you, Bohal Wisdom School, for having me. Ma'am Lor, naka-mute ka. <laughs> Sorry. A big round of virtual appreciations. Click our emojis now. Thank you, Ma'am Daisy Ann, for being God's channel and giving us such strengthening good reminders for us parents. Remembering that the moment a fragile, helpless, and innocent being was born, he must be taken care of, not only to survive, but to live life to the full as well. The guidance, protection, and the child's need for love is entrusted to an adult who is worthy to do such a responsibility called parenting. May we all try our best to deserve such a role. The open forum is now set to welcome any questions or comments. You can have it through the chat box, or we can request Mom Christine and Sir Arnold Rogudo to process similar questions and comments till our time allows. Please feel free All to right. interact and express your thoughts and feelings also online. We'll start okay. now. Yes, Mom Laura, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Miss Daisy, for that wonderful uh, presentation. And thank you for for saying yes to our request to have us today as part of our celebration of our 91st founding anniversary. So we have a question uh, from Sir James Bongkat and Mame Valmoria. Let me start with Sir James. Um, he said that I am overseas and have to discipline via video. My son misses his assignment Often, Once again, Ma'am Tien, can you repeat it? Can you repeat um, medyo hinay ang audio? Okay, okay. for well, ma'am. Um, according to him, he is an overseas and have to discipline via video. My son misses his assignment often and it's hard to get him to do his work on time, even when he uh, reminded daily of his schedules. So how can I incentivize him to do his work on time? Mm -hmm. so like how All can right. I um, was that the father who is away? Yes. Long yes. Distance, no? So yeah. um, um, is the mother in the picture? Is that um, naabaka ang mother in the picture? Because it may be dif different if the mother is there, no? Because uh, being communicating virtually alone is already a challenge and to convey a message is another challenge no um, unless if there will be a someone like a mother if one parent is away and there's one parent who is with a with a person because sometimes when we are virtual no matter how we teach them um, with the, with the use of social media no? It may, you know, 
uh, the impact ba of our teaching uh, moment or experience may be slowed down because of our social media access, especially that in right now we're not having our face to face, no? And that may probably be because there, there can never be one answer to that question as to how to do it because there could be a lot of factors. No, first, oh, sorry, Mam Days. Mam Days, yes? sorry. Uh, James Bongkak is the son. So uh, the mom, it is the mom, sorry. Yeah, he is, she is using um, ah, okay. the son's account. Mom. So it's ah, the mom. Si mama who is ang away, no? Yeah. Si ba? Si yeah. Mama ang away. Yes, yes. So, Thank um, you, mom. There, there can never be one answer, definite answer to that because uh, there could be a lot of factors no, nga may play come, uh, that may come into play. For example, is there someone out there to limit the use of social media, for example, because I believe very kanang ko ano, very uh, open ang access. Um, was the, is there someone to remind him or her if you are not virtually connected with your son, ma'am? No. Uh, another is that um, there it may need um, further asking of questions as to what makes him not follow you. No, and you can also communicate with him as to what you feel every time that James is not following you. And in that way, by communicating how you feel as a parent, that may somehow make a difference. And at the same time, um, we may go back to the practical things as to um, reminding him because lahi-lahi uh, put ang capacity of every children to absorb values and principles, no? That for one person, it may take three reminders, but for another person, it may take 10. And just because it is, it is needing, uh, the, the child is needing 10, that means you will give up because here comes another individual nga ikatulura siya, you remind sa yung mama, nga mang ikaw di man ka. We go back to their uniqueness as children, and so we focus on that. We focus on that. And also, siguro, ma'am, Ms. Bongkak, is to remind them also that um, we may, you may also, in your statements, you may begin with a positive and strength statement. In the middle, you can provide the reminders, the uh, little pre preaching, and then make sure to end it with a positive note we have one. No? I hope that's something that you can uh, apply in the future. Okay, thank you, Mom Days. So let's go to Mami Valmoria's um, questions. There are two. So the first one is, um, what are your thoughts on the biblical phrase, spare the rod and spoil the child? I'm sorry? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the biblical phrase, spare the rod and spoil the child? Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Okay. Uh, that is something subjective, no? Uh, um, in, uh, to be honest, it is not something that you can easily be objective about it and tell you that, hey, that is not the right thing or not. Uh, it's the right thing, no? Because we do have our own, um, like you said, it's it actually depends as well as to your um gipakadakan. No, um, if you are using rod to discipline, I cannot judge you for that. No one can judge you for that because we believe that in every experiences, like uh, a person to judge a parent who's doing it, wala siya sa katibukan experience ni mo as a parent and as to kung sa mga gipang buhat sa bata. No, but I myself, I because uh, disclaimer lang, it does not follow that just because I am advocating them, you, a, di, a perfect na sad ko, no, human as I am as well. I'm also learning with the things that I have just been talking about, no. And in my case, personally, I have used not rod, <laughs> but a belt, not because to impose fear to my child. It depends actually on the intention. I personally believe that it depends on the intention. No, it depends on the intention. I 
Uh, I, well, of course, I did not hit him in his kind of yung body jan and all. Sa iyang kamot, gikuan na ko no. Ana, I have done that, and some a person cannot judge me for doing that who do not. Uh, who does not know the whole experience, diba? Uh, and, and it depends on our, on our intention and our objective as to why we do it. And we have we can do trial and error if you if you believe if you think that it's you know it's helping because again there's no right or wrong. If it what works for you may not work for me, what works for me may not work for you. So if it achieves your intention, that is not. The intention that that is not only kanang satisfying your own need as a parent, uh, it should also satisfy the need of the 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 the, the child. If through that nalikay ni mo siya from doing something that may also makaguba o glain property, makaguba o makamaka harm of other life, then I believe. That would be okay. It depends on the intention of doing that. That's right. All right. So the second question of Mame is, how do we balance structure and nurture? All right. What a difficult answer, a question, right? <laughs> uh, as I've mentioned, I also don't have a definite uh, answer to that. But what I can say, siguro, is that parenting is always a kanang pakikiramdam no i like to use the term pakikiramdam um, if it's too much structure you can feel that you can feel out from the results on the outcomes on the actions and words also nagipang buhat sa imong bata you would know you would know all you need to do is to understand in the deeper sense, what is a structure role and what is nurture role? It is by then when you fully understand each role as to the right time and to the um, right timing to, to, to impose that role. And that would be the time where you are one step away from having a healthy parenting. Um, how to balance is again, pakikiramdam. Observe, find time. To, to, to observe how your child has been going on with not just with Sayang studies, but at the same time with what, how he is dealing with other people. How, how is he with his relationship with the Lord? How is he with, with you, with his siblings? Um, are you reaping positive outcomes with the things that you've been doing? And if it is yes, then you may continue. If something is is have have changed, then it may need for you to be flexible also as to how to go about the roles that you play. I guess that's okay. it. So one last question from Mame. Um, what are the methods of disciplining a three-year-old son? Okay. So yeah, very practical lang siguro, no? For a three-year-old, uh, for a three-year-old um son. Remember that in their cognitive development, they are still on the sensory motor stage. Ngano man ngalihukan man ang bata, because according to John Piaget's cognitive development, they are in the sensory motor stage wherein they learn about the world through their senses. So they would roam around, play around using their hands to touch something for them to know that it is painful, um, saba sila because they want to listen to their own sounds because that's how they, they would learn that this is sounds, things like that. They are in their sensory motor stage. So if you punish some a, a, a child na naturally maupadjud ang iyang capacity because biologically, di pa ready iyang mind to understand what you are saying, that would be very unfair. So to discipline a child is to make use of symbols, to make use of something that is un understandable on his level. Because if you discipline a child, kibaw ka, ang bata ba ya, kibaw ka, ang tao is inani, kuan ka, kanabitang layo pa sa iyahang panglantaw, then you cannot convey that message. So make use of creative ways as to how to tell them what you want to tell them. Uh, like you can use symbols, you can use uh, 
uh, fiction, uh, fictional characters, uh, characters of say uh, favorite movies, so on and so forth. And also remember that when you discipline a child, it is uh, a strategy that is effective now is when you sit down together. Because sometimes it's easier for us, okay, lingkod, paminaw na ko. Lingkod ha, nyo, ikaw kay, nagtindog ka no, so they are looking up at you because you believe that when they look up at you, you feel the authority and that's when para ni mo mas dali siya mo tuo. but it's not that. It's not that. It is when you let them feel that you may be under the authority but you can also be someone who can nurture him at the same time by 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 sitting down together with him and with her and then raising voice is not all the time the appropriate method no um kabantay ta even kitang adults if kasabaan ta mas duot sa bukog kung kana bilang palumanay nga storya pero na iduot compared sa sagitan ka and ko an ingana diba so um that's it I believe, uh, I hope, Miss May, um, you can, uh, I have imparted uh, something <laughs> for your three-year-old son. All right. So from our live um, viewers. Uh, uh, let me acknowledge lang, Ma'am Tin, no? Yes, uh, yes Ma'am. Ma yes, correct, Ma'am May. Uh, parenting is really a very challenging role um, to everyone. Yes, a career woman and so as uh, to someone with an OFW husband uh, like me, a seafarer, a uh, parent, nga ang usaka, a partner is wala diha, no, that becomes more challenging. And I give credit to all those parents who is doing the dual role no, as mother and father to their children, single, single mother, single father. I, I give my salute to you for, for making um, ex, uh, your effort each and every day to become the best that you could be, no? And even yes. if it is not challenging, uh, and even if it's challenging, again, it doesn't, uh, nobody is saying that we cannot do it and if we need help, there will always be help. And Sir yes. Alberto gives credit to his wife. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So from the live viewers, they, they don't have any questions, but... They just have their appreciation for, for your inspiring and encouraging lecture, Mamis. And at the same time, they're also grateful for this timely reminder of um, how to be a parent, no? Uh, so that they could also give the best to what uh, their children. Okay. So any other questions from our um Zoom uh, participants and also to our live viewers. <laughs> okay, so I think there is none, and I hope that we all have a great time today. So, Mam Ma Lor, let me give you the floor. Please mute, Mam Ma Lor. Okay, so by this time, let's have the e certificate uh, as our gesture of appreciation to our resource speaker this morning uh, that has to be given by Ma'am uh, Christine. Okay, so for a while, where is that? Oh, here. For a while, Ma'am. Okay, so as a gesture of our appreciation, um, Daisy, please um, accept this our uh, this e certificate for the moment. That uh, let me read the citation. No, so this certificate is proudly presented to Daisy Ann Pahangra Sunabe, MA Psych and Registered Psychometrician. For her valuable service as resource speaker during the parents' webinar entitled Parenting, Why It Matters. In celebration of the 91st founding anniversary of Ball Wisdom School with the theme, Igniting the Passion, Fulfilling the Mission Toward Healing and Restoration. Given this 8th day of December 2021 at the Bohol Wisdom School, Tagbilaran City, Bohol, Philippines, is signed by our head of the administrative team, Mr. All H. Diloso, 
PhD, uh, ma'am pada, <laughs> one edit, sorry. And our chairman of the Board of Trustees, Engineer Albert Uy. Thank you, Ma'am Isi. You are all welcome. This is my second time already, no? With Ball Wisdom yeah. having a virtual. Uh, how I wish that one day we can have face-to-face now with every one of you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Okay. It's also timing, Ma'am Days, because you are also one of the parents here in, in Bohol Wisdom School. Yes. <laughs> that becomes more okay. special because I'm already part yeah. of the parents of the students of Bohol Wisdom School. Okay. okay. Laura? Yes. Okay. No, the time is 11.43. It's about a few minutes before 12, but we will not be, uh, we will not be waiting for that. So today is the time to tell you that our role is lifetime and must be enduring. From our speaker, let me reiterate, children should feel loved and accepted. We must let them feel worthy and listened to, which makes them trusting and willing to take their life challenges. Then in their own time, they will for sure in turn be willing to give back to other people with the confidence taken from the emotional support they get from us. Once again, thank you for being with us today. This is your host, Maria Lorelia Amolato, saying goodbye and may God bless us all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so everyone. much.